welcome to the This Is Metal show. Um, today uh, we're doing something a little different. We got um, we got Ben Hicks and we got Eli Ackerman. Um, you guys are from. Um, you're working on a project. Um, tell us a little something about it. It's called. Um, what, what's it called again? Modest Cove. Uh, it's Matt. a suspense thriller. Uh, been working on it for quite a while because COVID shut us down for a little while, but now we're uh, back up and going. But uh, it's about small town corruption, tragic loss, and uh, it's it's about woman empowerment also. And we have a unbelievable cast. I, I can't believe I was that lucky to get who I got. And like Myra Zimmerman, she's a award winning actress. Kayla Perkins, award winning actress. She has multiple awards. And Joshua Varix, I, I can I can go on. And Ben, you are a writer and the creator. Now, let me ask you, um, where will people be able to see this? Is it something on the Internet or is that something that you're working on? Uh, we're working on going to a streaming service is where, where we're wanting to go. We're wanting to land there. And, and Tom, that's kind of where you come in. Um, so can you share with us, Tom, um, you know, the connection between you and Ben and this project and um, how you guys first took up? Sure. Well, the A&R guy for my record label, Mike Wilkerson, introduced us. And uh, actually, Ben uh, casted me in the show. I'm going to, as you know, we are now hooked with Netflix, um, Hulu, uh, everybody out there, Tubi. I'm able to shop this to everybody now, hand it right to them. So once the project's done, I'm going to try to get it shopped out to, there to somebody. And, and, and who knows? I mean, we've got cable TV involved. We've got DirecTV, DishNet. Everybody, you know, we, are, we got a long range to reach out to people now, you know. Wow. And Tom, I, I'd love to ask you, Tom, um, is your appearance, like, you're a regular character in the show, or is it a one-time appearance? Ben was writing me into the show, but he could answer that better than I could. Go ahead, Ben. <laughs> uh, no, he's going to be a reoccurring character. Uh, I don't want to say too much about his role, but he's going to love it. <laughs> 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 I, okay, I'll say this. I'll say this one thing. He is the new mayor of Midas Cove. Nice. And uh, I don't want to. I don't want to spoil like it because I told him I'm writing the. I'm writing, the, I'm writing his part. We actually, you know, last night I was writing on it, and he's gonna love it. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. <laughs> okay, so um, this is Lethal X. Or anybody wondering, he is the owner of Chaotic Risk uh, TV, so um, he likes to join us from time to time. Uh, we'd love to have him. Um, uh, uh, Lethal X. We got um, Ben Hicks here. He's a creator of Midas Co. And Eli Ackerman, he's a special effects. So let's talk to you, Eli. What exactly do you do, and how did you get connected with this project? So um, I actually initially got connected with Ben. I auditioned for um, one of the it's, – it's kind of one of the main roles of the series. And first time meeting him, one of our uh, author friends had recommended I audition. So I, I did that, reached out to him. He got back with me. I don't know, it was at 15 minutes, and he was like, hey, I'd like to offer you the part of Kyle McDaniel. And I'm like, okay, sick. So that's how he and I had initially got started um, um, in the like the business relationship with each other. And then as time went on, we started sharing a little bit more about ourselves with one another, and then he found out, oh, you make props and whatnot. Uh, let me see some of the stuff that you did, and I love making masks. So I showed him some of the masks that I made, and he was like, dude, you want to be head of special effects too? And I'm like, sure. <laughs> and things just went from there and, and and ben that must be i mean you save money a little bit that way you know having one guy that's not only an actor in the series but he actually is working behind the scenes so i love that kind of approach you know from behind the scenes um eli is when you see his stuff your your mouth's going to drop because we we have uh these one villains are with the cartel and they're called the death stalkers. They pretty much them are the ones they send out to mess you up really bad. And let's just say he has created a look for them that I have never seen before. I, I, it's, it literally gave me chills because he, he showed me the get up and I went, Oh God, <laughs> it's, it's, it's going to be awesome. It really is. So I'm um, lethal X. Uh, do, you, uh, do you or Tommy have any questions for the guy you'd like to throw out there? Go ahead. Go ahead. So yeah, I write scripts and and do all that kind of stuff too. So um, I tried to do a few of my own projects. And I know there's a lot involved in that that whole entire process. Um, yeah. Funding is one of the issues usually that you run into is trying to do that. Not talent's somewhat easy sometimes, but not always. Um, any special like thing you had to do to try to get this up and running off the ground? Um, mainly. Uh... 
I just went out, I talked with people and networked and I'm upfront and honest. No, I just pretty much laid it out on the table and I've been very, very fortunate to, I mean, we've gotten a private jet. We, we shot at a $30 million mansion. Wow. Uh, yeah. I mean, I couldn't believe I landed that. I was afraid to walk on that property. <laughs> 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 and uh, we are now, we're, we're about to get a yacht. We actually have shot on a yacht before. We're, at, we're about to get another one down in Cumberland to shoot on. And uh, like I said, I've been very fortunate with locations. Wow, wow. As far as coming up with locations, I mean, that's probably actually um, more of a harder part than, than coming up with the story because you kind of, it's yes. easy to come up with the story and, you, and you, you, you believe in these characters. These are your creations. But then yeah. it's kind of bringing it to reality and, okay, now it's time to start filming. Uh, okay. What's it going to look like? Because it's one thing to tell the story on paper, but now you're kind of transitioning. You know, what's it going to look like? Uh, well, best way I can gloomy, dark, eerie. I mean, this town is in pitiful shape. Yeah. It's a fictional town, but I'm saying a lot of tragedy has happened there. A lot. And it's it's a very sad. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna break your heart all the way through it, and then you're gonna like start rooting for certain people. I'm not gonna say who, but it's 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 just you know it's got all kinds of emotions. Left yeah, I, and right. I kind of base it on Ozark, Sons of Anarchy, and Dexter. That's my that's my you know inspiration. I can I almost envision like where where each episode ends. It's like tune in next week to see if he <laughs> lives or dies. <laughs> you know, like. Honestly, there's cliffhangers all over the place. <laughs> I mean, it really is because uh, there's so much story. I mean, I almost made the mistake of putting too much story in season one. And I didn't save any for season two. So now I've, you know, I went back and I stretched it. And it's like, I got I got enough for four seasons right now. Oh, wow. And I guess, too, a, a really um, big question here for you, um, Ben, is like, Again, it's one thing to come up with a story, you put it on paper, and, and you know, even reading something that's a book is one thing, but to kind of bring that to life, and, and um, you have live actors, like even something as far as um, the casting, because you're very close to these characters because you created them. So, um, like, talk a little bit about the casting, because I imagine people come in and go, well, that's not how I envisioned the character. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, got that. I get that all the time. Uh, once I put one out there, you know, I said, I'm needing need a roll field. I get like 500 emails. <laughs> and, and, you know, I will say people try, they really try hard, but the personalities, like I'm looking for something like Joshua Verricks. I accidentally, <laughs> it's funny. Uh, I, I told him, I said, I need you to be a prick. <laughs> Very, you gotta be smart. Alec. You gotta be awful. And I said, you got the look of a prick. I said, I'm sorry that come out wrong. I said, you've got the menacing look. Yeah. <laughs> and, but as soon as I told him to do that, boom, he was on it. And I'm like, that's what I want. And, you know, and it's also about tone, how their their power of speaking, like, can you deliver a line yeah. just right? You wow. know? Yeah. And, and now, Tom, I know, of course, um, Fire Rock is involved in this project as much as you are going to be appearing in it. So let's talk a little bit about um, placing music in you know each of the episodes. That must um, that must be kind of, kind of quite a thing to do, you know. We've been talking to Ben about that absolutely. So some of the fire rock artists are in there. Some of my some of my music will be in there. It's great, uh, and plus he he cast actually Jamie from um, Jupiter Night, right? Jamie's oh, in there. Oh wow. yes, I casted her. Yep, yep, she's great. She'll be great for she has a great part onto it and stuff. But what, what I like to say, Ben is. Why don't you talk about, is this your first major product project or is there other stuff you've done previous to this? Um, I've done previous stuff. This is the one that, it's my baby. I, I, you know, I'm, <clears throat> I'm in charge of it. But, you know, I've, uh, I start, well, my first big thing was called The Fifth Holler. It was, I was on four seasons of that. Uh, then I was on uh, a short, which won an award at a film festival called uh Devil Strikes Twice. Oh, wow. And uh, I've also done a bunch of plays and stuff like that. Uh, so where plays are a lot harder than filming because you can always yell cut and redo it. <laughs> plays, you got to be on. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm also, uh, Sammy Spencer's cast me as uh, 
uh, I can't say too much, but I got a role on the, uh, a short film called, or a feature film called Presence. So yes. I've been uh, yeah. been very lucky. I, I try to squeeze these little projects in because, but Minus Cove is like my, it's it's the main one because there's writing, casting, there's all kinds of stuff that goes with it. And how about you, Eli? What are some projects you've done before, uh, previous to this? Um, so for the most part, my involvement was a lot of uh, short films with my friends and my family and whatnot. And then in college, whenever I had done, because um, I was a film major in college, we were all in each other's films all the time. That was also whenever I got it really into um, into acting because I had to take a theater class. Um, props and whatnot, I've kind of made all my life because like growing up making movies, if you couldn't get something, you had to make do with what you had. You had to learn to make it or whatnot. So that's always uh, always been a thing. But after college, that's when I really started with the um, hardcore and with like the acting and whatnot. Uh, did a couple of features with some of my friends. Took a hiatus because of some weird things that went down. But uh, gradually after a while, started to come back into it. Did a couple more features. And then that's whenever I met, uh, I met Ben. And mm-hmm. things have just been on the upward climb since then and, and let me ask you ben what, what's it like to go you know you've done all these projects before which is uh, you know great for uh, when you get to this point in your career but what's it like to come up with like this story this idea and kind of see it coming coming you know in, into reality if you will you know you actually sell the idea to somebody that yeah let's do it you know um I'll tell, oh yeah i'll tell you uh the first day i walked on set and I start. It didn't really hit me until they started filming, yeah. and it just—I was—I was for a second. I just felt like time stopped. I'm like, oh my god, this is happening. Yeah. And yeah. then when I when then when I had to do my scene, I'm just like, oh god, this is it. This I mean, because yeah. you spend all this time writing and coming up with these scenes and you know episodes, and then boom, it goes past that. You're actually filming it now. It's it's a different world. It really is. Yeah, and again, it's taking it from a page and like putting it up on the screen. This is something people are going to actually see. It'll be something visual. Your 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 story coming to life, if you will. I mean, um, yes. everything from really creating the characters. I, I imagine the more scripts you write, you really get into the development of each each individual character. Yes. So personalities yeah. start to come to life almost. Yeah, Midas Cove is personal for me because. Uh... Well, one episode is dedicated to my daughter that passed away. Oh wow! Sorry. To hear and that. I used and I used her name in it. Her name was Olivia, mm-hmm. and um, I kind of get closure in sure. an episode. Oh wow! And and, and my scope is like you know, you're dealing with those emotions because, like I said, it's tragic. It really is. You will feel so sorry for those people, and it's. You know, like I said, it's kind of closure for me, and it's kind of just kind of paying tribute in a way. Oh wow, that's uh, that's 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 one not wonderful, but you know, it's wonderful that you can kind of um, deal with that that way through your art. Yeah. You know, yeah. you really can, and then people can kind of get a chance to kind of little know a little more about your story, and you get to pay great tribute to your daughter. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean. Well, what I- I- I think you could almost relate to that, Tom. You know, like when you when you write a song, you know, it's not exactly the same thing. But you know, you, you come up with the guitar parts, and then the other guy in the band puts the vocal down, and you got a complete track eventually. Put it, and then you put the record out, and people respond to it. Well, all mm-hmm. my songs are true. All my songs are true to life. Every yeah. song that I write is something that's affected my life. Whether it was the song "Rise," was I had three guys in my band previously that committed suicide, so I did a song dedicated to them. "Hot Night in the City" back in the '80s. It was when kids were running away, you know, and it was like the big thing. They ran away to New York City. A lot of them got pimped out. They got murdered, things like that. So that's what Hot Night in the City is about. And like lightning, wow. I have friends that have such phobias. I have a friend that lightning has got a phobia. He's one has got night terrors, doesn't want to go to sleep. And in the song, it says nights, nights full of screams. If you know what I mean, when you wake up, you'll be free. That's the only time mm. she never wants to sleep. She's horrified. So so doing stuff like that, that's why, you know, I, I think it's true to like my new song, Rescue Me. It's going to be the name of our album. I brought in some of the most iconic rockers in the world. One of them actually committed suicide. He was in my band. The wow. last thing he did before he committed suicide, wow. I brought him back to life. You know, so it's going to be yeah. a pretty powerful song. We're, we're finishing up the tracks for that. 
That's what I was telling you about Ben that we should have in this uh, in this thing. Show. Oh, I cannot wait to hear that. Uh, yeah, it's a rock ballad, and, I, and I've actually. I'll even tell you, I tapped my good friend Ripper Owens to come in and sing the song for me. Hey, he's hey, always, he's that, always, hey, Tom, oh, here's, a question, here's a question for you, Tom. It's the song that is about your friend Phobia. Do they know that they were of inspiration? Oh, uh, some of them did. Yeah, I told them that. Lightning. Everybody thought when I did Lightning, it was because I was showing that the band could go 100 miles an hour. And it comes out at 223 beats a minute. But it's all about phobias, you know? Wow. You know wow. It's like the, the wind, the rain. People are scared of shit. I mean, spiders, everything. But it was like, this was more about real phobias. The lightning. People are horrified of lightning, you know? And they're yeah. horrified of evil things, things like this. People, so when I'm writing, it's always about things like that. But, but let's get back to Midas Cove. This, I think, is just such an in inspirational story. I'm, I'm happy that, that Ben brought me into this thing. And like I say, Fire Rock's going to put out our resources to bring this thing to, you know, to fruition for him. We're going to go out, and I'm in a position where I can reach out to Tubi. I can talk to Tubi. I can talk to all these top streaming services you know, cable TV, I can reach out to the presidents of these companies and say, hey, take a good shot, listen to this stuff, you know, and they'll, they will at least take the time to, to watch it for me, you know, and I, that, that's that's the best I can do. But I think, you know, Ben bringing me into this thing, I'm very excited with Mike bringing Mike being involved into it and having Fire Rock. I, I, we want to make this thing a success. We really want to get behind this and, and do everything we can for him, you know. Yeah, yeah you know, I, and I think it's great to have that connection with Fire Rock. I'll tell you why, Tom, because I can't tell you how many times like I watch something on TV or Netflix or even at the movie theater, and because of music or stuff that you know certain songs are in it, it draws me to it. So I think like even with the Fire Rock artists being featured in some of uh, some of these episodes is a great relationship because those artists get a little more exposure. People might not otherwise get a chance to hear those those songs, you know. Absolutely. Uh, um, right? Music to me makes or breaks a movie. You got to have the music. I mean, if you go through a whole movie with no music, it's just going to be weird. <laughs> but you got to have that hard rock in there because you know you you're, you're, you know a lot of people cheer for the villains. Like yeah, yeah. You know, Jason Torrey stuff, they're cheering. You want that music, you know? The Joker, <laughs> stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Ben, when you when you create this story, um, do you look to any of your heroes? I mean, talking stuff like that, you know, I, I don't know if you're influenced by comic books or anything like that. Oh, yeah. Like Bat yeah. Batman and stuff. Um, you're like, I got to kind of create these memorable characters for, for what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'll tell you the best way. Uh, the, one, it's, it's inspiration to me is uh, The Crow. There you go. Yeah. I love I, I love The Crow. It's, oh, God, it's sad. It's, 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 it's got everything. <laughs> you know, you, I mean, name anything. It's got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tragedy, you know, the action, it's got it all. And sometimes, just, you know, when you're creating villains or, or bad guys, you got to even make them somewhat likable, you know? Yeah, that's funny you say that because I do. <laughs> 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 and, you know, who, and, you know, I kind of, I took some inspiration from Game of Thrones. I, I always say this no one is safe, not yeah. even me. <laughs> 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 And um, how, how important is it to stay away from political stuff or woke stuff, if you know what I mean, like stuff that you hear about on the daily news? I, I, I try to stay away from that. What what I want to do is people get home, they want to be entertained. Yeah. And I'd rather them just put everything on a shelf and just go away from that stress of the, of life and stuff like that. I'm there to basically entertain you and, and you know, you enjoy it. And then, then you can go back to <laughs> whatever it is you do. I mean, I mean, I like that. You even look at something like um, the, the Oscars, which is, used to be a great annual event. And that's kind of my um, philosophy. A lot of those award type of shows and things like that. Entertain me. Don't, don't preach to me. Don't tell me what you exactly. think I should or shouldn't believe in, you know? entertain me <laughs> exactly i mean it's all about the story it and, and you, to me i just i don't go that route because that's not what my story is about i mean oh yeah there's a mayor there's some politics but it don't last long <laughs> i'm just saying it, it's the story, not, it was, story. It makes sense yeah yeah i mean that that stuff is just it's very tricky it's very risky to go down that road and i just assume my show stay away from it and so, like, where do you guys shoot? Do you, do you have a do you shoot once a week, or how often do you go and shoot an episode? 
Um, oh God, Eli! Remember we shot we shot fourteen hours one day. <laughs> he remembers that very. Yes, well. I do. I remember that very well. <laughs> uh, we we shot in Somerset, down the Cumberland Lakes, uh, Lexington, Louisville. Uh, basically, I go where the locations are. I mean, as long, long as it ain't like in a different uh, country, <laughs> I can't afford to go there. But, uh, you know, it's all about I try to do my best to up the production value. You know, nicer the location, the more impressed people will be. Yeah. You know, you know, I have a friend. He had a Dodge Viper and uh, he let it. He let us. He loaned his car to us wow. and we got to shooting it. And I'm just like, yeah, so <laughs> that's pretty fortunate to have those, you know, Expensive so toys. <laughs> uh, where's the farthest you've ever had to go, like to shoot? Is it pretty local to you? Oh God, Eli, what do you think? Because Eli's always been with me. What do you think, Eli? What's the farthest one? <laughs> I would, I would say right off would probably be Somerset. Okay. Really? Yeah, I would, I would agree. We, we, we went to McKee one time. It wasn't exactly that far. It was just like all back roads and cornfields and you pray to God, you don't run out of gas. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you must come up with ideas even as you're shooting an episode, like, Hey, you know, we need to be great in here. Before we shoot the next scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I try to reach out to people and I tell them, you know, I'll give you credit in the show. If you let us use your location, you know, and you know, I'm real respectful to people's properties and stuff. And, you know, we don't, like, I, I'm not going to do a fight scene in somebody's house. That would be oh, insane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, I just get out and talk with people, and I've been, like I said, been very fortunate with locations. And how much of the actors, they ever, um, have you had any um, instance where actors kind of want to really um, be involved with the, let's say, development of their character? Like, well, I don't think she would do it this way. Or, <laughs> um, Well, what I do is I tell all my actors, uh, Make it your own. If you got an idea, let's discuss it. And let's see how we can meet a common ground. Because, I mean, and, and I, I really like their input. Sometimes they got better ideas than me. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, the, because, like, you know, Joshua Verrick, he said, I think he should do it this way. I think, you know, he should, like, you know, basically we come in the room. I think I need to smack her when I come in the room. <laughs> I said, okay, let's try it. And it, you know, it worked out. I'm just like, well, that's, yeah, you know, I, I, I love their ideas. The reason I ask is, you know, like I do a show on um, pop culture stuff and um, it, it's amazing. Like a lot of the favorite classic TV shows and things we watch it's where some of the actors just ad lib something. Like uh, I was reading where um, Henry Winkler in Happy Days, he's the one that kind of came up with, hey, okay, okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> the thing you, know, you learn when you, when you um, do stuff like that. Um, Tom, you have anything else you'd like to ask uh, Ben or talk about um, what your experience with um, him so far has been like? Well, it's been great. I'm just happy to have met him and stuff like that. I mean, it's really, yeah. I'm looking forward to being part of this. And, I, and again, I'm going to put out our resources and help and help this help the show along a lot. You know, I, I, we've now got the contacts that we needed. I was hoping to get now I can call Tubi and say, hey, we got this show. I want you to check it out. I can call Netflix and say the same thing. I call Hulu. All of them and get the right people to look at it. But uh, mm -hmm. and 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 hearing about the, his daughter, that makes me want to do it more. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you, that's you. Uh, it's Tom. I'm I'm honored you're you're part of it. I really am. I'm, I'm the one that's honored. I appreciate it, and that you're even going to our bands and music, things like that. And you know what? And here's the other thing that I'll tell you: even bands that are on this each each year at the end of the season, each season, we'll put out a soundtrack for you on Fire Rock Music Group, and we'll sell that soundtrack. We'll put it out worldwide for you. You got my word <laughs> on that. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, Jupiter Knight's uh, album. I'm looking forward yep. to hearing it. I cannot wait to hear it. It's a great album. I've, I've heard it. It's, it's, oh, have you? Guys, oh, man. Yeah, those guys. I wouldn't have signed it if I hadn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that, that was Mike's band. Mike brought them, and he was he was adamant, and he was calling me at 3 o'clock in the morning about this. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm like, I'm asleep. <laughs> well, you know, well Mike, now Mike told me you don't sleep. <laughs> he I, said, you I, don't. I, He's close. I sleep five hours a night. Hey, Tom, this, you got to hear wow, this. You get five hours? Hey, Ben, you got to hear this. Besides his band, he's the president of the record label. He does this show once a week. Um, real estate know, broker? He does real estate, too. I don't oh, you do real it. estate? Well, get us some plus, uh, locations, man. I can. Plus, plus, I own a publishing company, too. 
a music publisher. Oh my God. That, that's yeah. just a side gig, though, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> side but, gig. You know, if you guys were in New York, I've got we've got Ferraris up here. I've got I told you yachts. We could go. I got speedboats. Everything. My brother's got classic Mustangs. He's he collects them. You know, we've got everything. If you need a tank, we've got. I got a friend that has a tank. Are you serious? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I will take you. Now, I'll take you up on that. That's worth the you drive. Come up here. You, you <laughs> let, yeah, definitely. I I even got an extra house you guys can stay in. You know. Oh, awesome. <laughs> well, we could uh, find a way. We get enough funny. We will get all the actors and the crew up there. I'm I'm game, man. And if you need <laughs> beautiful, <laughs> if you need beautiful women, I got boatloads of them too. I oh, mean, on yachts. That. You want bikinis <laughs> on yachts? I mean, oh man. Hey Ben, I have, I know a few people. Hey Ben, ben <laughs> let me tell you on that on that level. Did he ever tell you a story where he met, not even knowing he was going to meet her, showed up to the airport waiting for a flight, meets Priscilla yeah. Presley? Yeah. yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, I hung out with Priscilla Presley. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God! <laughs> what yeah, are the yeah. odds of that? <laughs> yeah. This woman kept smiling at me, and I looked over, and I was like. Somebody huh? says, that's Priscilla Presley. I said, bullshit. I walk over and say, hey, hi, Priscilla, how you doing? Put my arm around her. We stood here. We had a blast. <laughs> Rocking, laughing, joking. Took some pictures together. Had fun. <laughs> yeah. Nice. It just happens sometimes, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That'd be, wow. <laughs> Priscilla yeah. Presley, of all people. I've got yeah. connections and stories, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. You're not supposed to share them all, there, Jason. Oh, Don't I'm all me. ears. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that I'll show up in his, his next now script. That you're, now you're going <laughs> to be appearing in Midas Cove. Are you are you are you studying your acting and all that and practicing? Hey, I'm on stage every day. That's what I tell people. And real <laughs> yeah. estate, music, every day. I don't worry about it. Give me the lines, and I'll do it. Real thing. I've, right. I've actually I've actually been in movies before too. So uh, yeah. Oh, uh, Tom. By the way, uh, I have a scene. I'm not going to say what it is, but you have a scene where you're playing the guitar, kind of sitting by yourself playing some chords wow nice nice i, yeah. I might know a little bit about guitar i played one I, yeah i mean if you want to take some lessons you know <laughs> that's right true yeah yeah well hey see if steve Vai is available i know steve i don't know i know steve, know steve Vai. Vai. i, I got yeah. a picture of me and steve Vai together absolutely i know steve uh, Vai. first hey, time man, i saw I him was the movie crossroads yeah loved it tom can also love it also, he also doubles as a lead singer when Ripper Owens isn't available to. I do, I do. <laughs> oh, and when Ripper can't make it, I do leads. I do lead vocals. And even when we're playing together, we're on tour. We switch back and forth. I'll sing half song, oh, he'll sing the other half, and then we'll sing it together. Yeah. You know what's so weird is I actually had a Tama drum set. I used to play drums. Oh, nice. And, uh, I mean, Metallica was probably the Black Album. Oh my God! I mean, he that, that inspired me to play the drums right off the bat. Wow. And, I back in my heyday, I could I played the song one all the way through, didn't miss a beat, and I'll probably never do it again. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a hard song to play on the drums. Nice. Oh wow, wow. You know, everything we've learned in this episode, I gotta tell you, Tom, I think that's a great idea what you're telling Ben at the end of each season, you'll put out a CD of a music with featuring the because you know how many times you, you see a you know, they don't have a soundtrack or something. Oh, I, I dig that song, but let me, you can find it is going on YouTube. Yeah, put it on our song. Yeah. We'll do a soundtrack every year for Midas Cove. Oh, I, I do good it. Me. Yeah. I mean, hey. y'all got some of the best bands I've ever seen. I mean, they are absolutely incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's going to get better. Yeah. And plus, you know, we'll, it doesn't just have to be bands on our label. If if you if you've got bands you bring in there, uh, we'll put them on. We'll put them out there. We'll put them on the on the compilation. We'll do like a yeah, do the soundtrack for you every season. Yeah, I, do, I season. do have uh, Troy Burchett. Uh, he's got a band. Uh, he's uh, got one song. It's a, it's a it's a sad song. It's called One More Time. Uh, he's uh, loaning it to us. Uh, you're to you're to check it out. See what you think about. It. He's 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 a, he's a decent singer. He's really he's really good. Nice, nice. Yep, excellent. Yep, you know, that's all. You know, you guys. All... Before we wrap up today's episode, I also want to put out this idea, this suggestion. So, for any sure. of these musicians or bands that are going to be um, providing the music at Midas Cove, we'd like to welcome them on as guests, and we could. Not talk about only talk about Midas Cove and their music or songs going to be featured there. But talk about their band specifically, or you know what they got going on, and we'd love to do a further cross promotion that way. Yeah, here's another thing: if they want to be in the scene, just like like sitting at a diner or something, they are more than welcome. More wow, than I welcome to do it. Yeah, get a little screen time. So, nice. so um, let me ask you guys um, before we do wrap it up: is there any projected? Um, 
date as far as when people will be able to see this or it's kind of a work in progress at this point? Uh, right now we're uh, finishing up the pilots and uh, we're going to take it from there. Uh, lo locations, the problem is uh, the marinas and stuff like that. They're just now, we're just now being able to schedule in to get locations. It's, it's the timing right now. And, you know, I have a, a director, Derek Spurl. He's an award-winning director and he does editing. And I told him, take your time. <laughs> I said, when we, when we release these pilots to show these stream servers, I said, I, I want, of course, he's unbelievable what he does. And I just said, I want to do it right the first time, not the second yeah. time. And, and, you know, Ben and Eli, I want to also say that um, don't think you're not welcome back here, you know, because as a project develops, I would love to have you guys back or even, you know, Ben, bring some of the actors on or the director, whoever's working Absolutely. on it. Absolutely. And you Absolutely. could also include that as bonus material, maybe in some of your future episodes. So Absolutely. We're all about promoting this because um, yeah. I, I would love to really see it develop from the ground up like it is, you know. Uh, I'm game. Yeah, Anytime I'm, you want us, we're both same. We're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, and I was going to chime in on that. That's kind of how Jason and I started this whole process, was just to promote everybody, put another avenue out for everybody to be able to to get their word out about something or a project they're working on. So, yeah, you guys are definitely welcome to come back anytime. Awesome. Yeah, and I got to tell honored. you guys. I'm honored. Lethal X and me go so far back that um, it was actually – we met up on MySpace where we first hooked up, if you can even imagine that. Wow. <laughs> MySpace. Oh, I ain't heard that in a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. That's old school social media. <laughs> yeah, that, that's how far back the story goes. In fact, um, Lethal X and I are going to start um, working on a documentary about about our, um, our our website and everything, which started out as an online magazine and kind of what it's turned into now. So uh, that's yeah, the entire we're... journey. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow, that's that's amazing. And Tom's part of that journey too, so he'll he'll be involved with it as well. So. <laughs> I'd like to thank you guys all for uh, doing today's episode. It was really great. And like we said, you're welcome back anytime. Awesome. Um, this, will, this will be going up in a couple of weeks. We'll let you know once we have a date for it. And of course, feel free to put it on all your guys' sites and promote it. We love that. All right. Absolutely. And thank you all thank so you. much. Yeah. Anything thank else you. from Tom? Thank you guys, man. We'll talk to you guys soon. And, and let's get this project kicking ass. Go kick some ass with it, man. Absolutely. Yeah, See you up there. Take care, guys. Yeah. See you later. Yeah. Thanks, bye -bye. Ben and Eli. Hey, Damien here. If you like today's show, please be sure to subscribe by clicking the link in the lower right-hand corner or on our page. Thanks for tuning in.